Uh, today I wanted to talk about the Galaxy S20 Ultra. This is a phone that I actually don't get a ton of requests uh, to take a look at. It's usually the Note 20 Ultra, but I think that this phone is such a fantastic phone. I actually think it's better than the Note uh, 20 Ultra in a, a few ways, actually. So, one is that the price is just way, way cheaper, right? You can find this, you know, new 300 bucks, as you can see right there, and then you can find this easily, like, two. 37 good condition um it's just way cheaper than the galaxy the note 20 which is still trending let's see it might still be trending around 400 okay so the price has yeah it has not really come down excellent condition yeah it's still trending around that that 400 dollars price point um for the most part here for like an actual good condition one uh you can see like a good one here is 334 so not bad but uh, the S20 is just going to be at least, you know, $100, $150 cheaper for sure, if not $200. So, this is such a fantastic phone, and I'm always kind of, you know, puzzled at why a lot of people don't like this phone. I think a large part of it has to do with the cameras. Uh, so, let's actually touch on that first. So, I think the cameras are pretty good on here. This phone does have... Well, it did have like a, a kind of like a focusing problem, and it still does. Like, I kind of notice it. Um, sometimes but it's not anything to where it's detrimental to the photo quality or just the experience in general here it still has a 108 megapixel standard it's got a 48 megapixel telephoto has four times optical zoom and 10 times hybrid zoom this was the first phone to do the hundred times you know space zoom thing and then we also have on here uh, we do have the 0.3 depth sensor 12 megapixel ultra wide shoots in 8k 24 and then the 40 megapixel selfie cam on the front and shoots in 4k 60 as well the photos on the s20 are still pretty good as you guys can see uh, my only issue with this phone is that again like the selfies again come out kind of it does it on the note 20 as well too where it, it just just does that weird kind of skin lightning thing uh, but the actual selfies and the actual shots um image quality wise are still pretty good if you're in like good lighting you can get some fantastic shots out of this phone it's very impressive i got shots of the moon uh, um it's just it's just a really really good you know camera phone um video is also really solid on this phone as well too i absolutely think the cameras are fantastic uh yeah does it have kind of like a focusing issue sometimes uh yes uh, but it's not anything to where I think it makes the camera experience like super, you know, negative for for the most part. Um, so yeah, I do really, you know, dig the cameras on here. Now the thing that makes this phone I think better than the Note is that it's way easier to hold, especially for a phone that's you know extremely big, right? It's a 6.9 inch phone. It's a dynamic AMOLED, 120 hertz HDR10 plus. 1400 nits peak brightness it's 1440p for the max resolution and again you can only use 120 hertz in 1080p but this phone is like it's way easier to hold than the note and this is coming from someone with you know smaller hands and stuff like that so i just really like holding this phone and how it feels in the hand it has those curved edges so it's not all sharp like the note or you know i and, I, and it's kind of sad that samsung moved to you know the the note form factor uh, which I think looks aesthetically better. I think it's more pleasing to the eye. It looks more like a TV, but this is just way more comfortable uh, to hold in the hand. So, you know, that's something that I've always appreciated. Uh, but that kind of sex way into the the hardware on here. A lot of people think that the design on the, the S series, you know, in general, has a very bland design. I don't know what it is. I don't know why Samsung went with such a bland design this year, but I think it still looks nice. It's just very... I guess it's very, very boring and maybe this gray color is not really you know doing it uh, but yeah it just has a very boring design uh, you know looking at it in 2024 it's very safe design like Samsung wanted to play it extremely safe uh, but the cool thing about this phone is that you do have micro SD card support on board as well too it's got 128 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM it's IP68 dust and water resistant and like I said very comfortable to hold as well the weight distribution you know you're not getting a ton away from this camera um, to where it's like it feels funny 
Um, it's just, I do really like how the phone feels in the hand. I don't think it looks that bad though. What do you guys think? Another cool thing about the S20 Ultra is that the gaming performance is very good on here and it also has better battery life than the Note 20 Ultra as well. So, you know, it's a pr pretty interesting as we saw with that battery drain test. This phone did a f fantastic job. You can see we got smooth 90 frames on here. It's really, really buttery smooth, the gaming performance on here. So like I said, you got that, that big price difference as well too of it being, you know, $150 to $200 cheaper. And, you know, I know this is especially beneficial for my guys that are overseas and stuff like that where the budget is really important. Um, because of the currency conversion all that stuff, but yeah, I just think this is a fantastic I, th I really think this is an overlooked phone guys um, Especially if you don't need the S Pen if you don't care about like the kind of boxy display I mean this phone is fantastic uh, when it comes to gaming you can really do some Competitive gaming on here for relatively cheap. It's still gonna do much better than you know any mid-range budget phone for the most part now here are the Geekbench scores if you guys want to compare to your phone so you guys can see how it compares in single and multi-core scores here. And uh, yeah, it's still very fast and fluid. So this phone, it got its last major OS update with Android 13, when you UI 5.1, and it's only getting security patches uh, from now on. So just do note that it's just, you know, exactly like the note. Um, but yeah, this phone is blazing, blazing fast. S20 does have stereo speakers on here and they are pretty decent sounding. So you got pretty good sounding stereo speakers on here, really good amount of bass. The top speaker is actually uh, really good as well too. And then we also have our ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on here, uh, which works fine. And then we also do have our face unlock, which also works great as well too. And this of course comes with all the bells and whistles like Samsung desktop support and you know, et cetera. So overall it's a, you know, it's a very good phone when it comes to giving you that flagship you know features and quality uh, for a relatively cheap price now lastly the battery life on this phone is pretty good the standby time is awesome as we saw with uh, the battery drain test it shocked a lot of people including myself the phone almost I think got second place to the S24 Ultra I think it was like seven hours of playing PUBG or something like that uh, for the screen on time it was absolutely insane the battery life is very very good on this phone it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got 45 uh, watt charging on here. It's got wireless and reverse wireless charging. The battery is very, very good on here. Like I said, good standby time. It's much better than the, the Note 20 Ultra as well, too. So, overall, I think this is a very underrated phone. I don't, you know, I think it, it gets a bad rap for the, you know, the cameras and stuff like that, which I understand, but I don't think the focusing issue is really that bad. Um, and yeah. Overall, it's just a fantastic phone. If you don't need the S Pen, I would get this phone easily. It's cheaper. This is way more comfortable to hold. Um, the battery life is better. It's just a really, really awesome device. But let me know what you guys think.